action involving four London clubs on the big match today. And between them, the games produce ten goals. That's the shape of the next hour as we bring you as our main match, the derby game at Stamford Bridge, Chelsea against Arsenal. Still Graham, shrugging off Hinton, putting it across now for Radford. Tremendous covering though by Hollins. The goals from Hull against Charlton. Chilton, what a lovely game. Chilton. And oh. from the high-scoring Stockport-Fulham game. And Earl, well saved Ogley. Now Conway, number one. Now it's been disallowed. Our studio guest is Alan Birchinall of Chelsea. We shall, of course, be looking at some of your letters. And today we have some quite fascinating film of the mighty Arsenal side of the 1930s. But it's the Arsenal of today that we're first concerned with as we go back to Stamford Bridge just before three o'clock yesterday. Chelsea against Arsenal, both of them still strangely looking for an identity this season. And Chelsea have not been helped by a long list of injuries. For this match, they field a team that is without four regulars and Alan Birchinall was only past fit just before the game. That bold striker, Tommy Baldwin, is fit to face his old club, Arsenal. And today, they too have an injury problem because they've named a team that has Charlie George in at number 11 for George Armstrong, who sprained an ankle in training. And they too include a man playing against his old club. And that man is George Graham, who had several good seasons at Chelsea and is now having his best one at Highbury. The game has pulled in a crowd of 46,000, and now we're all waiting for the start. So, referee Pat Partridge of Middlesbrough gets us away. Arsenal defending the goal to our right with white sleeves to their shirts, and they're wearing the dark stockings. Chelsea in blue. And really, this hasn't been a very uh, happy hunting ground for Arsenal. Their last six visits here, they've profited by only one point. Now it's Hinton. But neither side has found goals easy to score this season, but here's Simpson making the break, looking for George, who's come in for George Armstrong. Simpson well up there. And now Dempsey for Chelsea. Osgood, Chelsea, who probably had their best result of the season on Wednesday night in the League Cup with that draw at Leeds. Here's Hausman. Charlie Cook. George right back there to try and stop him. He gets it across just over there by Osgood. Two players with tremendous flair, Osgood and Cook, very nearly creating a goal for Chelsea with only a minute gone. And now McNabb for Arsenal. Beaten by McNabb. Bradford. For Baldwin. Collins. Birchinall laying it off for Baldwin, but so many red shirts are there. Here's Cook. Baldwin playing it off. Beautiful. Cook. Oscar in the middle and Birchinall too. Going in. Great goal by Birchinall. Wonderful goal for Chelsea. scoring then his third goal of the season. Chelsea ahead. George for Arsenal. Far too slow there, Hollins, but he recovered from that challenge by Samuels. What a magnificent sprint by Charlie Cook it was. Taking that one too that led to the goal. Here's Cook, the man who really set that up for Chelsea. Free kick to Arsenal. 
Five red shirts grouped at the far post. Radford making a sprint towards the near one. Samos to put it across again. And there's Robertson just over. Well, both sides may have had trouble scoring goals this season, but certainly there's been no lack of enterprise in the opening period of this game at Stamford Bridge. Bonetti with a goal kick for Chelsea. Merchandor flicking it on to Baldwin. Baldwin finding Osgood, Hausman on the break. Here's Hausman going through and Simpson covering. Samuels finding Robertson a good pass. Robertson sliding one tackle there from McCready and uh, Arsenal keeping possession. McNabb, good crosser of a ball. Chelsea's throw. out of it, Osgood to McCready, good confident play again by Chelsea and good running by Hausman, Simpson again shadowing though, Virgin all number 10. Baldwin to Virgin all. Osgood calling for it at the far side, Cook has gone into the box as well, Virgin all still, looking for Osgood, Osgood, over! Great coolness by Osgood, and that ball just wouldn't bounce quickly enough for him. And he had to try a stab at it as Arsenal men moved in very quickly. Malcolm Webster is... George. Dempsey, Osgood flicking it on for Baldwin. Radford to George. Caught. And Samuels in. Story to Graham. George is there. And now Houseman for Chelsea. To Cook. Chased by Radford, beaten almost by Radford. Now Hausman. Osgood, surrounded by Red. Arsenal taking a firm grip now. So far as midfield is concerned, Radford playing it off for George. Can he get there before Bonetti? Good anticipation by Bonetti. He started coming and he kept going. Osgood. Cook. Osgood again. Cook has continued his run. Far too slow. Robertson coming in and taking it off him with so much ease. Now it's Samuels to Grail. Good switch to find Story. And I would think that's probably a free kick with Story taken from behind, so completely as he was then by Birchinall. And in fact, the referee, Pat Partridge, having a word with Birchinall. Now McClintock. Graham to flick it on. And George almost getting it in and almost putting it in by McCready. But a corner then to Arsenal. Radford on the goal line, George at the near post. Robertson with it. George Graham getting up. And using 
Hinton, I think it was, as a means of getting up a little bit higher. Seven goals this season. Simpson missing that one, but uh, McClintock at the back for Arsenal. Dempsey, dominant as ever, at the back for Chelsea, and now Peter Hausman having such a fine game for them. And this time it's ball win away, and Webster well out of his goal to fly hack it to safety. After Webster. But more pressure now soon to bear down on Webster because it's Cook for Chelsea. McNabb with it. Finding Hausman. And now looking for the jumping ability of Birchinol. Birchinol again to Cook with time. Magnificent save by Webster. What a wonderful save, and certainly Cook had plenty of time. If anything, perhaps too much time. He looked for his spot, and Webster saved brilliantly. But it's still a corner to Chelsea. Cook with it. And Webster again with his fists. Samuels taking it away for Arsenal. George Grail, McClintock, finding Court, but Court put under pressure by Birch and also it's Hinton, they're again feeling for offside and no, says the referee, Osgood, and another good piece of work by Webster. Robertson, Samuels, and he really has played well, Webster. Kick to Arsenal, Peter Simpson, number six. Trying to search out George, but he's got Boyle with him. Now Cook. George Grail. Charlie George gone over to the right, and of course, Boyle is with him. Samuels, George, and again Boyle with it. Every Chelsea defender has his man, and Boyle's man is Charlie George. Graham. McClintock well up, he might get into a shooting position, McClintock, deflection, off McCready for a corner. Which of course is the sort of McClintock that we know a lot better than the one we've seen in the last week, who has been very much confined to the back four for Arsenal. So a corner to them now, Robertson with it. Radford going towards the near post, McClintock staying up there, Graham too. Samuels, Graham, pulled away by Hinton, but it's Birchinol now for Chelsea. Almost knocking the centre flag over, it was Birchinol, Graham who was pulled down there by Hinton in the penalty area. Now McClintock. And the whistle goes for half time. Chelsea holding his lead. The lead that was given them by Alan Birchinol with that superbly headed goal. There's Birchinol number 10 with Hollins four. But of course, a man who's made two tremendous saves for Arsenal, Malcolm Webster. Still to come on the big match programme highlights from the Hull Charlton games and Stockport Fulham. The half-time score here at Stamford Bridge is Chelsea 1, Arsenal 0. More soccer for you in just a moment.
referee Pat Partridge gets the second half away. Chelsea leading by this one goal to nil with some really encouraging form behind them in the first half. Virginal number 10. And Webster for Arsenal. Chelsea, of course, who've had their troubles with injury this season. In fact, going to this match without Harris, Tambling, Webb and Hutchinson. They've had to play it very tight, cautious and defensively most of the season. They've had their critics for that. And in fact, they've scored only 12 goals in 13 games up to today. Dempsey, McNabb now to Robertson. And Dempsey miscuing that time, but Bonetti is safe. McCready, Birchinall flicking it on into the path of Hausman. Story closing in on him. the post a really determined run by Hausman that really deserved something a little better than that beautiful play by Hausman and a tremendous let off for Arsenal Hollins now to pump a long throw in there again Hausman once more and wide Tremendous work by Peter Hausman. Baldwin finding Hausman with Birchinal outside him. And Story giving away the corner. Birchinal, who's really had a lively game for Chelsea, always very dangerous in the air. Dempsey's gone well up for this one as well. There's Bertinol. Dempsey coming in on the right-hand side of the picture. Now Cook with the corner. And put away for another one by Storey. Dempsey staying well up. In that six-yard area. In fact, not making Webster's job any easier. Here's Cook again. Virginal going in, Webster punching away. Osgood, very good control by Osgood, a beautiful little dummy, which he serves not once but twice. Hausman, and another corner. This time off McNabb. Dempsey's still up there, the big number five, you can see. Hasn't had time to go back, in fact. Baldwin at the near post. Hausman with a corner, low. Samuels missing his kick. Dempsey trying to get in. Hausman again. Pumping it through. Quick save. Number two. His second goal of the game. And Chelsea two ahead. of the second half gone and Chelsea giving every indication of keeping up this jinx that they have on Arsenal Radford now for Arsenal falling and the referee saying no nothing more than a goal kick Could beat two men very nicely there, but uh, couldn't quite finish it off. And Peter Bonetti with a goal kick for Chelsea. Fortunately, the game getting up well. And Osgood with Shannon the challenge. Osgood away again. But Simpson with him. And that was.
was a bit of good cool defence by Peter Simpson. Samuels. Cut out well by McCready. Three Chelsea players offside. Dave Sexton in the suit. He's had his trouble with injuries, but two up now. He must be well pleased. Samuels back to McClintock. Graham and McClintock taken badly from behind by Hinton. So free kick to Arsenal. And the Chelsea wall, what, five yards back? Six, perhaps seven yards back now. There's Bonetti's view of this free kick, and it's not a very good view, is it? Again, we get the idea of how difficult it must be for goalkeepers from these sort of positions. McClintock. Oh, but tamely to the feet of Virginal. And Webster coming well out of his penalty area to play it to Simpson. Free kick to Arsenal. Foul on Robertson by McCready. McNabb to take it. And plenty of red shirts in that penalty area, marked by Blue, but plenty to aim for. Benetti losing it, and getting it beautifully there. Off the feet of George Graham, as Graham was about to try an overhead kick. Tremendous reflexes there by Peter Benetti. again for Arsenal continuing to push forward but looking just a little laboured as they do so Graham watched by Hinton Story and McClintock trying to add weight and numbers and that shows you with that deserted Chelsea half of the Arsenal half of the field. How many men Arsenal now are piling forward? Caught to McNair. And now story to McClintock. McClintock playing it wide for Samuels. Back to McClintock again, pumping it first time. Graham going for it, getting his head to it! Pushed against the post by Benetti. Tremendous leaping by George Graham, who of course is one of the most dangerous headers of the ball. Graham number 10, Robertson with the corner for Arsenal. away but not very far Samuels pumping it back and Virginal in a bit of trouble and finally the trusty boot of John Boyle gets it away for Chelsea Virginal really was in all sorts of trouble in that penalty area it's Simpson for Arsenal beginning to apply greater and greater pressure on this Chelsea defense now Samuels and Dempsey away for another corner. And it's when there's pressure like this on the Chelsea defence that you realise that Arsenal are missing a man like Armstrong, who is a dogged and gritty little fighter. Benetti catching it and losing it. And finally, Hasman away. Simpson to pump it back relentlessly again. Samuels is up. So is Graham, and so is Dempsey for another corner. Armstrong is one of those forwards who can take on a defender and beat him. And this is really what Arsenal are lacking at this moment. 
They're really piling on the pressure, though, and it's Robertson with another corner, Birchinall. But only as far as McNabb and high over. who's going to have plenty to do, I would think, in the last quarter of an hour of this game. And Merchant really pushed hard in the back by McClintock. Graham. Samuel's trying to get in. McNatt also trying to get in and finding Robertson. Three red shirts in the middle. And one of them is McClintock getting up there beautifully. And you know, the goal by Graham. No, he's disallowed it. The linesman had his flag up. The goal was disallowed for offside. And the linesman was directly in line and had his flag up at once. Dempsey to Boyle, and now Hausman, taken from behind by Court. <laughs> Having a quick word with David Court as he passed, not making a big fuss about it, that's a good piece of refereeing though. Baldwin on McClintock. And McCready covering for Chelsea. Simpson to McClintock. Flicked on by Charlie George to John Radford. Story making numbers. His story. Got another chance to pop it across. And a beautiful overhead kick there by Graham. Here's McNabb. Just passed. George Graham is really doing some dangerous work in that penalty area. One disallowed, that overhead kick that wasn't so far away. Osgood. Greedy. Collins finding Dempsey. Cook. Three on the right. And another corner to Chelsea. Causing McNabb a little bit of pain. And of course, he's only just recovered from a groin injury that uh, kept him out of the match last weekend. Cook to take the corner. Short to Hollins. Now Cook again. <laughs> Cook! There was definitely a deflection, but it was shot there by Charlie Cook. A cunningly taken corner. And Chelsea now three ahead. must put the game beyond the reach of Arsenal now with something like four minutes to go Chelsea three ahead now McNabb putting it straight into the path of Cook again so Charlie Cook scores his first goal of the season on the burst. Cut out by Simpson. Hausman. And Arsenal's throw.
Arsenal's throw. But we're in injury time now. McClintock. And there goes the final whistle with victory for Chelsea. And a very clear victory indeed, thanks to Burchinall here, number 10, who scored two of their goals. And number seven, Charlie Cook, who added the last one. So the final score here at Stamford Bridge, Chelsea 3, Arsenal 0. Well, as you saw, I gave that last goal to Charlie Cook yesterday, but the deflection that I spoke about, in fact, went off Tommy Baldwin, and I noticed in today's papers that he, in fact, has been credited with that goal. But uh, our studio to guest today, uh, Alan Birchnell, quite clearly did score two goals in the game yesterday and got a good press for it this morning. Brave Birchnell blasts Arsenal. Birchnell is boss. Alan is in the studio and with him, Jimmy Hill. Alan, was that Chelsea's best performance this season? Yes, I think so, Jim. You know, definitely. At home, anyway. I think uh, we played better than that on Wednesday night against Leeds at Ellen Road. But... Uh, it was definitely the best home display of Chelsea this season. Yeah. The crowd around me, the, well, the Chelsea fans anyway, were buzzing with excitement. And I think what really got them going was that first goal, which was uh, really a lovely movement, as good a goal as you see anywhere. How did you see it? Well, I didn't, Jim. This is the old <laughs> point. You know, I, uh, the only thing I saw was Charlie just floating the ball over. I can't remember anything of the build-up at all. Only heard afterwards... Well, we can get a, a get a chance to see it now. It came from a goal kick, and John Radford gave a careless ball off there, which was quickly picked up by Tommy Baldwin. Slipped through there, Tommy challenges for it again and gets it out to Charlie. Charlie normally holds the ball, but this time he plays it very quickly, and there's a lovely flick off the outside of the foot by Tommy Baldwin. And there, you're lurking on the far post, but it's the quality of this cross that beats one, two, three, four Arsenal defenders on the way over. There you are, running into the far post, soaring in there, and guiding it down beautifully between the post and the goalkeeper. Do you reckon you can jump higher than... Uh, w what about players at Chelsea? Any player in the Chelsea team, can you out-jump? Well, I wouldn't like to say, Jim. <laughs> you can put him in a spot there. But, you know, when I'm, when I'm feeling... You know, when I'm enjoying my game, when I'm feeling good, you know, I think I can... I'm it's as good as anybody. It's yeah, it's I don't want to put you in a spot <laughs> over it, but it's my impression uh, that you... Uh, when I've seen you go up, you're tall to start with. When you really time your jump well, I reckon you've probably got two or three inches over anybody. Yes, well, I, felt, I feel very confident, you know, up going up for balls just lately, you know. I feel as though I'm getting, I would say, 80, 85% of the ball, which I should do probably that, being practice? a big fella, you know. Practice, or were you born with it, or what? Well, I think it's a lot, a lot of, it has to do with practice, you know, over the years, you know. Mm. <laughs> I think you have to practice everything to, you know. Mm. Well, in fact, your, this ability did create another chance for Chelsea soon after, which gave young Webster a chance to show his paces in the Arsenal goal. All, uh, most of the chances, I think, were occurring to Chelsea. And this was uh, after a scrimmage. It gave Charlie Cook the chance to score what was his first league goal for two <laughs> years. But it didn't come off. But here you see, as it's bouncing about, there you go. You win the ball again in the air. Very important around there. And Charlie picks his spot, whips it up into that top corner. But just watch this save from Webster. It doesn't look as if he can get it, but he stretches his arm, his hand, and his fingers and glides it over the top of the bar. Really magnificent save there. Absolutely wonderful. So graceful, it looks in slow motion. Yes, it did very well. Yeah. What about the rest of the Chelsea side yesterday? Who impressed you in it? Well, I think all the boys played well yesterday. You know, it's just that confidence seems to be coming back now after the flood of injuries we've been having just recently, you know. But uh, I've been very impressed with... Uh, Peter Hausman this season, all season, you know, he's very, been very tenacious. I'm, I'm particularly pleased about Peter Hausman because I felt that the fans last year didn't give him a chance at home. In fact, we talked about it on, on a big match programme last year, that he was playing better away than at home. But since he's gone into the middle of the field, he really is impressive. He impressed me so much yesterday with his work, his skill, guts to go fighting for the ball. In fact, he did uh, bring about the chance for you to score the second goal yes. uh, with a fierce shot. That's right, yes. Yeah. <laughs> He's been playing Do you remember well, anything of that one? <laughs> well, I just remember Peter picking the ball up, you know, and yeah. uh, tonking it. <laughs> tonking it with his left foot. You've got a lot of left-footed players at Chelsea, but it came from a corner. Here it is coming up now. Little mistake there by John Samuels. And Arsenal do appear to get it away, but in come Peter Hausman, whacks it there, and Webster can't quite hold it. He saves it, and there you are, stealing in very quickly, catching... Peter Story napping there a little bit. I thought it looks as if you're offside, but obviously you weren't. You ran 
from behind him, and he was rather caught out, I think, by the ball running loose. What's different about Arsenal this year? Do you think they're the same side as they were? I don't think they're the same side as they were last season at all. You know, I mean, we played in the two games last season, and there was uh, a very, very hard side to play against. They never let you settle on the ball, turn with it, or do anything. You had to be very, very sharp, you know. But this yesterday especially, I don't know whether they've been playing like this all season or not, but yesterday they seemed to not want to commit themselves at all, you know. They you uh, weren't under the same pressure we weren't in, under the in the same middle pressure, of the field. You know, we, we was allowed to turn and go at them, you know, which of course we like doing. Do yeah. you think that in trying to become more stylish uh, and, and have more flair about them, they may be losing some of the qualities they had last year? Do you think it's this? Well, I wouldn't like to say, Jim, you know, I mean... Uh, I don't think I don't know what you can put it down to. It's just that they seem to have lost a little bit of something which they had last year that was successful for mm. them, which everybody recognised was successful mm. for them, and I think they seem to have lost a bit mm. on yesterday's showing anyway. You know? But they did give you a run for your money anyway. I mean, the game was in doubt until quite near the end. Uh, in fact, Peter Bonetti on his birthday uh, did had a very very uh, efficient game, shall we say, a clinically efficient game uh, to keep a clean sheet and made a save. Uh, in, in the match, which from uh, George Graham, there it is, right against the post, against any other goalkeeper, that may have been a, a goal, uh, and Arsenal would have been back in the game. Did you feel at any time that they would catch you after that first goal? Uh, the second half, when we came out of the second half, they seemed to put a very, you know, was under very heavy pressure, you know, mm. the beginning of the second half, and I thought Arsenal was playing fairly well at this Point that of the that game, was yeah. Arsenal, not you, because the fans around me were saying, attack Chelsea, attack, don't go back on defence, attack, and they didn't seem to be in sympathy with the side. Were you meaning to defend them? No, well, I don't think uh, fans understand, really, you know, in every part of a game, as you, you probably know, you know, a side just cannot attack for 90 minutes and all out attacking, you know, there comes a period in the game where the other side gets a chance to attack, yeah. and this was um, yesterday, we, obviously, we don't want to defend like that if we can possibly avoid it but yesterday Arsenal put us under so much pressure we had no alternative but to defend. Well in fact you did put the game beyond doubt, the issue beyond doubt, right near the end of the game, five minutes from the end, again with a goal from a corner which was uh, almost once more Charlie Cook's first league goal for two years but in the end we find out that it was deflected by Tommy Baldwin. Here's the corner and in fact it called our commentator out. There's the shot from Charlie Cook and as it goes you can see Tommy Baldwin flick it up in the air, just guide it over the top of Story's head. And I think were it not for that touch, Story would quite definitely have cleared it off the line. But uh, it, it did catch uh, a commentator. Did you notice the deflection on the field? No, I didn't, Jim. You know, I was facing Charlie at the time, you know, and all I saw was uh, the ball leave Charlie's boot, and by the time I turned around, the ball was in the back of the net. So I naturally thought that Charlie had scored the goal. Well, it did. Uh, I did notice there at the end of that. I, I wonder whether viewers thought we were into a film there. That was still the football program when you gave him that lovely kiss. Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what, what did he think about that? Well, I, I've, I was embarrassed straight away after, you know, and Charlie was more even embarrassed. You know, he gave me a rollicking after about it, you know. I'm not like that normally, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's worrying me is if you kiss him like that when he nearly scores, what are you going to do when he really does score? Well, I don't think he'd be able to put it on the screen. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, as long as Chelsea keep scoring goals like that, I'm sure we won't worry. It's my prediction they'll be the best of the London clubs. Whether they can get right to the top of the league and challenge for, promo for the championship will be up to you, Alan. I wish you luck. All right. Thank you, Jim. Our second match on the programme today is the second division one between Hull and Charlton. Charlton who've had such a rocky last fortnight or so where they've conceded a lot of goals and badly needed to pull themselves together if they're to make any challenge towards the top of the second division. So they went to Hull. Hull are in the lighter shirts. The commentator is Jerry Harrison and the pictures come from Anglia Television. And Lampy. Let's put it with a kick. Simkin. Good snapshot there by Simkin but... Uh, Good positioning by Burns, the goalkeeper there. Crawford, another of those overhead flicks to Peacock. Good turn of speed. Here's Peacock. What a good goal. A beautiful goal there by Keith Peacock. And all started by a good flick by Ray Crawford, the man just coming to the picture, but the man who takes certainly all the credit for that, Keith Peacock, wonderful turn of speed. 
A lot of people keeping uh, one eye on Frank Banks, still on the touchline, getting treatment and uh, looking a little bit better, but not all that much. He's on his feet now, at least. David Lill. Lampy. Looking for Chilton. That's Chilton. Gets it across. There's Butler. Simkin. Chris Simkin. His first goal of the season and a very, very welcome one. And that's how it finished. 1-1. One, one, a very useful point indeed. For Charlton. Now it's time to look at some of your letters. The first one comes from R.S. Morley of Wood Green, London, N22. I've often been told, he said, how great the Arsenal side of the 1930s was. Would it be possible to show something of them, and particularly Alex James? Well, we've got some training film, Mr. Morley. The baggy pants, I agree, are quite outrageous, but I think while we smile, it's worth remembering that this Arsenal side were in a class of their own at that time. The highest pitch. Here on the left of the trainer is Hume, famous outside right. And there's Alec James, right in the middle, one of the greatest soccer players in the world. Outside left, Bastin gives further proof of his versatility. The Arsenal paid £2,000 for his transfer from Exeter City, but he certainly justified it. The Arsenal team have reached an extraordinarily high standard. So long as they keep it up, they'll always be taking the ball into the opponent's half and putting it into the net, just like this. Well, that really was marvellous, wasn't it? I'm sure all Arsenal fans enjoyed it. And to think that Cliff Bastin has got to justify a transfer fee of £2,000. Really, things have changed in the transfer market over the years. Our next letter comes from Alan Dunn of Wokingham in Berkshire, who was puzzled by the Newcastle goal nets that we saw in their recent game against Derby County on the big match. Why, asks Alan, are they two-toned? And why have they got a smaller mesh than is normal? Well, in fact, Alan, here are the nets that you saw and commented on. I asked the Newcastle secretary about them. He said the nets are black and white, which are Newcastle's colours after all. And the smaller mesh prevents missiles being thrown through from the crowd onto the goalkeeper, which I'm sure you will agree is a very sad commentary on the state of affairs. But that's, uh, I hope, answers that little query for you. Uh, the last one comes, in fact, a card simply signed PJC of Harrow. And he says, please show again the slow motion shot of David Sadler and John Radford jumping for the ball last week at Highbury. I've always felt that slow motion close-ups of football are a thing of beauty. And watching this, who can deny that he's right? Sadler and Radford, a really beautiful slow motion study and perfect timing. In fact, uh, we indulge ourselves a little bit, uh, Mr. PJC, because we've also looked out a piece of uh, film that we thought might go well in slow motion to prove this point, or rather to emphasize this point, in the Spurs-Manchester City match. Here it comes now, Francis Lee number nine and Mike England with it. Now just look at this. Look, no one is touching this ball. All the work is going on around it until finally Francis Lee touches it away and Mike England goes off in chase. Beautiful stuff. It really does prove again and again what a graceful football, a game football is and how much slow motion helps to prove that point. Our last game on the big match today, in fact, uh, we go down to the third division and we uh, catch up with this staggering rise of Fulham. They went to Stockport County yesterday. Fulham, in fact, are in the darker shirts this time, not their usual white. Fulham in the darker shirts. The commentator is Gerald Sinstat. The pictures are Granada's. Boyd's header through to Earl. Earl pulling it back. Over Campbell's head. And a free kick eventually to Fulham. to take it. Earl's head. Number one. Beautifully flighted free kick from Johnny Haynes. Steve Earl's goal. His eighth goal of the season. To Lloyd. Lloyd again. On to Kala to Brown. Bad mistake there between Haydock and Griffiths gives a chance for Barrett to turn it inside to Haynes and Haynes straight out to Conway. This is good by Fulham. Conway a little bit slow. And he gets his goal! It looked as though Jimmy Conway had completely thrown that away. 
Looked as though he delayed much too long after Haynes had put him clear. But gets his 13th goal of the season. Now into the second half. Earl again. Still in possession. Brown Griffiths. Pulled back for Haynes. And touched in. No, not quite touched in by Lloyd. Slid away eventually by Danny Campbell. There's a pedigree about this Fulham passing in the penalty area that County are finding difficult to cope with. Barrett with the corner. Conway. Ogley trying to put his legs in the way of it and it's turned in by Earl. Terrible mess up there by the county defence. Ogley feeling perhaps that he couldn't get his hands to it, tried to turn the ball away with his legs. And so Earl gets number three. Quarter of an hour to go. Goal kick to County. Straight to Barrett. Callahan. Haydock. Brown out to Conway. following up to pick up the loose one Brown Horn and Earl well saved Earl again well saved again Earl again and that time you won't see it better done on Blackpool Pier three shots and the third one going in to give Steve Earl his hat trick and to put Fulham 4-0 in the lead. Three men in the centre. Morton at the back of the box there, just turned off his head by the substitute for Fulham, Mick Pentecost. Price. What a trial. But too hard with his cross. And a chance here, number nine, John Rowland scores the first for Stockport County. And that's how it finished, 4-1 to Fulham. Do you realise now they've scored 27 goals this season and only Liverpool in the four divisions can match that? Now, before we come to our last bit of action on the programme today, I know an old Fulham player, Jimmy Hill, wants to get in a word about his old team. I don't like all those olds, Brian, but <laughs> nevertheless, <laughs> I'm delighted, needless to say, to see Fulham doing so well. But one of the things that I've noticed particularly from this programme, I don't know whether other people have, is that we've seen matches from first, second and third divisions in the programme and it's been most noticeable the difference that there has been in the pace of each division, in the, the speed of each player, the control of the players, and the number of mistakes that are made. In fact, um, there was the one Fulham goal, which Stephen Earle got, uh, where he had three bites at the cherry, three chances to get the ball in the back of the net. And although you may say the goalkeeper did well to get that far, there were other players around the place who could have got it away and would have done, I think, in a higher division. Here it is now. Look, there's the first one. That was a good save. There's another one. They're still struggling. It looks as if only the goalkeeper's playing and the other defenders are just walking around there looking, getting ready to moan. I think number five there looked the most miserable player <laughs> I've ever seen. And, of course, he would never have got that chance, would he, in uh, either the first or the second division. But what about Fulham now? Do you feel their confidence is coming back? Do you detect this? I think it is. And, and although we've seen the difference in standard very clearly between the division, it just shows what can happen to a side when it loses its confidence, which is what happened to Fulham. They slid right the way down, far beneath their ability, and now, thank goodness, I think they're just beginning to get it back. And players like Conway and Earl, who have this terrific sprinting power and uh, no mean skill as well, I think are suddenly finding themselves with space and, and the ability to get through and score goals, and this is building up their confidence. It, it's really very exciting to see, and uh, I only hope that uh, instead of taking a misunderstood boat of sympathy up the river, I'll be able to take a, a, a boat of joy up the river at the end of this season to celebrate Fulham's promotion. Jimmy, I'm sure a lot of people in London would agree with that. Fulham have slipped far enough, and it's nice to see things at last beginning to turn just a little for them. That's all from the big match today. I hope you've enjoyed it again this week. Another one for you, of course, next week at 3.15. As usual, we leave you with the last bit of action. Alan Birchnell's first goal for Chelsea. Watch this wonderful heading power again, and wonder like us if injuries permitting, it's also going to help Chelsea to the top this season. Collins, 
Virgin all laying it off for Baldwin, but so many red shirts are there. Here's Cook. Baldwin playing it off beautifully. Cook. Oscar in the middle and Virginal too. Going in. What a goal by Virginal.